Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For those of you who are joining us via Facebook now, welcome to the second night of our revival. I bring you greetings on behalf of myself, our First Lady, our deacons, our ministers, our staff, and our entire Macedonia church family. We want to let you know that we are grateful that you are joining us on tonight. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people as we lift our hands, as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. We had a wonderful worship service on last night. I thought, sure, we were going to have to call in the fire department and let them put out this fire that were burning in our hearts and minds. The Lord moved in this place and in the hearts of those of you who were listening. And we are grateful. And we thank you for coming again, whether you're coming via Facebook or whether you're here inside of the house. And we are indeed grateful. I want to ask if you desire, for those of you who are joining us Facebook, we thank you for your liberal giving on last night. Many of you gave through Givelify and you sowed into this ministry. If the Lord leads you, uh, you can't go anywhere and get a meal like this free. Y'all didn't get that. The Lord blessed us on last night, and we want to give you the opportunity to sow into the kingdom, and the Lord will certainly bless you in return. Our preacher, Dr. Tremaine Johnson, introduced himself on last night, so I will not go through a formal introduction again. He is the proud pastor of the Zion Baptist Church in Newport News, Virginia, where he has served for, the, for many years now, and I was enthralled when I rewatched the service on last night to see how many of his members were on Facebook Live cheering on their pastor. That's what it's all about. That's good news. He's a sought after preacher and lecturer. He's a psalmist and a worshiper. You saw that on last night. And we are honored to have him with us these three nights. He's been the Newport News, arrived there early this morning, and then now he has returned. And we thank God for his safe return. Our first lady is coming now, Sister Jackie Henry, to present our psalmist for the week. First Lady Ronnie Stearns, who is our worship leader and psalmist. After she finishes, Dr. Johnson will come to serve us dinner. We are here with great expectations. Pray for the preacher. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. I am so thankful to have this opportunity to stand before you tonight with the task of presenting our psalmist of the week. If you were with us last night, whether in, in person or on Facebook Live, you were blessed as our psalmist blessed us with the rendition of her debut CD, Holy. Well, for those of you who were not with us on last night, I stand before you to introduce our psalmist of the evening. Ronnie D. Stearns is a native of Columbia, South Carolina. She proudly serves as the leading lady and worship leader of Victorious Christian Deliverance Center in Hope Mills, North Carolina, where she partners in ministry as an elder of the church with her husband and pastor, Elder Jermaine L. Stearns. She is the proud mother of Journey Lonell, Jordan Lilly, and Josiah Levi. Lady Stearns is a passionate worship and music minister, leading others to experience joy in God's presence and celebrating his greatness through song. She is a 2018 Carolina Best finalist and has ministered on various platforms with some of gospel music's greats, such as Miranda Curtis and Dottie Peoples. In July of 2020, Lady Stearns released her long-awaited debut single, Holy, which is a worship anthem and expresses the greatness of God, his nature, and his power. She is a willing vessel ready to be used by God, and she truly believes and is confident that he will do exactly what he has begun, which is a good work in her. He will perform it even until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 6. I present to some and introduce to others First Lady Ronnie 
Fullwood Stearns as she ministers tonight, Sea Revival by Jeffrey Golden. God bless you. Hallelujah. We thank God for revival tonight. Hallelujah. Anybody need to be revived and restored in this place? Hallelujah. We're just going to call on the name of the Lord tonight, and we're going to claim that we're going to see revival. Hallelujah. Let the revival begin in me, God. We're going to see revival in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody worship. Hallelujah. Hey, we're going to have a good time tonight. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we're going to see revival. We're going to see revival. Yes, we're going to see revival. In our day. Yes, we're going to see revival. We're going to see revival. Oh. 
in our days. If you believe that, come on, say, your Holy Spirit falling on sons and daughters. Oh, say, we're going to see it. Oh, say, in this place. Oh, we're going to see a move of God like never before. Pour out your spirit, God, like never before. Oh, come on, stay in this place. Oh, stay in this place. High and lift it up. Train filling the temple. In this place, pour out your spirit. In this place. We want to see a move. We want to see a move. this place hallelujah god thank you lord hallelujah come on clap your hands hallelujah this is revival as we come tonight to lift up the name of the lord will you stand with me as we offer god our thanks for revival for being in a place where we can love on the lord and and love on his goodness and give him the praise and give him the honor and give him the glory he is our god he is our king and he is our everything and we honor him tonight we thank the lord for just another night of revival that the Lord has allowed us to be able to come together to lift up his name tonight. I want to call your attention tonight to Mark, the fourth chapter. Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. There you will find words of the scripture in which we will focus on tonight. 35 says to us, that day, when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. Don't miss that. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves and broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, God, I pray that you will have your way in this space. God, move by your power. God, we pray that you will allow us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Somebody came tonight for revival. Somebody came to lift you up in the place. Somebody came to honor your name. God, tonight we, we need a word from you. God, just one, just one word will do. We need your word tonight. God, have your way. Move by your power. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. Come on, say amen again. You may have your seats in the house of the Lord tonight. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke and it was and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Your Bible will say, master, master, we perish. <laughs> he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. 
He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I want to talk from the text tonight with your prayers and certainly by the aid of the Spirit tonight from this text in the form of a question. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Uh, this text tonight has drawn my attention several times within the preaching ministry. The word and the events within this text reminds me, and some of you may remember the Sony Pictures release film in 2005 entitled, Are We There Yet? Some of you may remember the film starred Ice Cube and Nina Long, and the plot of the story was about a man who believed that he had met the woman of his dreams. And while she was single, while he couldn't, what he could not swallow was the fact that she had two children. And that's not so bad if you will ever have seen the movie, but these two children are not any ordinary children. They're not the best two little children that one would expect. Kevin and Lindsay are a force to be reckoned with. They are very, very protective over their mother. They refuse to let any man continue in a smooth relationship with their mom without going through some small tests. In fact, they have had the profile list of brothers that did not quite make it, but as it would happen in this situation, their mother has to fly out to Vancouver for a job. And the kids were supposed to be brought to the airport by her ex who could not make it because of sickness. And any man that know how to spit good game and has a good Mac claim, understand that this is the kind of chance you want to make sure you get your feelings in place and get the chance you need. Ice Cube stands up to the challenge, jumped at the opportunity to win her over and to win her favor, and he volunteers to get the kids to her. The volunteers to get the kids to her just to get in with a sister. He agrees to get the kids to her himself by flying out to meet them in Vancouver. However, although he gives her his word, he does not realize the storm that he has to endure to get to the final destination. Because sometimes, men, we, we don't think the whole thing through. At times, we just see what we could get out of the situation that make us look cool. But Ice Cube is alarmed when he has to wrestle with two children that try to get them to safety but the difficult piece of the promise is getting the children there. They're not very cooperative. They're not very easy to deal with. The children did not like him. And Kevin and Lindsay are not great travel partners. And along the journey, Ice Cube has to deal with tricks played on him. And the children running away from him. And the setbacks and the mishaps that attempt to injure him. I think they tried to kill the brother. All the while, hearing the question over and over and over again. Again, they said, are we there yet? Uh, while the mother waits on them to bring her children, regardless of the fact that she really hardly knows him, she has to trust the word given to her by him that he will come through with what he said he would do. And even though there were several incidents that could have communicated that they would not make it or they would not survive through them, even though she's worried about the safety of her children, the question of whether they would make it, they arrived to Vancouver because he kept his word that he would bring the children to the place where their mother requested. Uh, now, now, that may not shout you initially, uh, uh, but, but it, it might not mean much to you as you look at this pericope, but stick with me here because I thought back on the movie and the lesson within it, and I realized that I could learn something from this. What grabbed hold of me was the fact that Nina Long was in a difficult position. As a mother, she desired her children to be with her. She wanted her children to safely arrive with her and join with her. She didn't want anything to happen that would upset her. But in the midst of all that was happening around her, she could do nothing 
but trust the word that was given to her. She couldn't move this way and that way. She could only trust that what was promised to her will come through. What he said that he would do, she could only trust that he would come through on what he said he would do for her. And that blessed me because I believe you and I know how it feels to be in that kind of situation. To have promise given to you and offered to us in hopes to retain the confidence that the promises will come through for us. Now, 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 promises made by humanity may not come to fertility, but promises from God come with expectancy. And, and I don't know about you, but there are some things as I thought about on the movie, I thought back on, on this word, how, how he, how she has to depend on this word. I thought about that over and over again and I realize there are some things that God has promised me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some doors that God said he would open for me. There, there are some great blessings that he's assigned to me but I have to trust God to come through on what he said he would do concerning me because all I have is a word. I, I don't always have uh, everything given to me. All I have is what God said. And people of God, I know I'm not alone here because I believe that there are some of you that know that God has some great things in store for you. I wish I could have somebody holler back at you, boy, because you do know that some things that God has promised you that you're waiting on, some situations that God has confirmed you will come come through. Yeah, I know I'm not by myself. I know there are people here whom God has spoken to concerning what he plans to do for you and through you and even though you're not there yet, you're willing to do whatever it takes to get what God promised you, whatever you have to deal with along the journey because you have to trust what God said he would do. Yeah, that's not always easy now, isn't it? It's not always easy to trust because there are times that you might not see your way through. Even though you know what God said to you, but the undeniable fact is you have to trust God even when you can't trace him. You have to depend upon him even when there are no symptoms of a breakthrough. You have to walk by what he said in the midst of what appears to be antithetical to what you're going through until you arrive to the ultimate deliverance that God has promised you. You've got to trust his word until the word comes through. It, it's not easy, is it? And can I be honest with you tonight and tell you that while you're on the way to what God has for you, get ready for this. Storms may rise. <laughs> oh God about it. Winds may blow. Rain may fall. Uh, rise and fall may happen in your life. The troubles of life will show up. The, the trials of adversity will come evident. The load of reality may disrupt your strength, but I've come to the conclusion that if God said it, oh Lord, somebody ought to believe it. If you know he said it, somebody ought to shout, I know he'll do it. Even though I know he won't fail me. He always provides for me. Sometimes I get just like Kevin and Lindsay. I want to ask God, God, are we there yet? And I'm, I'm sure inquisitive minds want to know what is there, preacher. I'm, I'm sure somebody in the room want to know what is there. I'm sure many persons in the room want to get the clarification of the situation by asking what is there. And the answer is the question of inquisition is that there is the place where God promised he would take you. There is the blessing that God has for you there is the deliverance that God know he can do for you there is the breakthrough that God has on hold for you and if there anybody here that know that God will take you from here to there if you know he will why don't you wave your head and shout I know he will 
even though I know he'll take care of me, sometimes, I just want to be real with you, sometimes, uh, yeah, this is the preacher talking here, sometimes I get discouraged because I ain't there yet. Uh, sometimes it looks like there are people that are surpassing me. So sometimes haters seem to have more than me. Sometimes friends that don't even do me right look like they're getting ahead of me. Look like the people that ain't living nothing are surpassing me. Look like everybody else is going around me. And I want to know, God, when is it my turn to get what you have for me? I want to know, God, are we there yet? Why don't you tap yourself on the hand and say, there, there, there. I know, I know that God has something for me. Because while I can sense its proximity, while I know it's close to my destiny, even though I realize I'm almost at the place that God has called me to be, I have come to the conclusion that I might not be there yet. But until I get there, I need somebody to tell me how to keep my sanity until I get there. I need somebody to encourage me that God still has a breakthrough for me. I need somebody to remind me that he's still working it out for me. I need somebody to proclaim with me that God is still with me because sometimes I just want to know, God, are we there yet? Everybody else is there, but when, are I, when am I going to get there? It's in the text. Somebody say, it's in there. Uh, it's like Campbell's suit. It's in there. Uh, somebody point to your Bible and say, hey, it's in there. Uh, yeah, everything you need is in there. I, I wish I could talk to somebody. Your healing it's in there. Your, your, your deliverance, it's in there. Your breakthrough, it's in there. Your power, it's in there. Somebody hold up your Bible and say, it's in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the text. When one takes the time to consult the terminology of the written text, the Bible says Jesus has been teaching and he's been instructing and educating the people concerning the word of God because it's good to sing a song. Oh, God Almighty, it's good to clap your hands. It's good to be at the door and usher but when you get a word from the Lord not just preached to you but taught to you not just taught to you but shown to you I'm looking forward to the day when people are stop shouting on houses and they'll kick up the heels because they find power in the word of God I'm looking for the day when folk all look around and say all I need is one word Word from God. Can I get one witness that can't wait to get in the word of God? Somebody open your mouth and shout the word, the word, the word. Jesus is teaching. The Bible says he's educating and getting the people to understand the word of God. Why don't you whisper down your row and say the word, the word, the word, the word. That's what I need. To, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Yeah, yeah. Why don't somebody type that in the comments and say the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Because the devil wants you to get excited about all other things. Oh, but when you get the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Uh, yeah, yeah. The devil wants to get you discouraged when the car breaks down. But oh, when you get the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. The devil wants you to get discouraged when your relationship is falling apart. But when you put word 
word on it. Go on, God Almighty. Uh, when you put the word on, somebody said the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Jesus uh, is teaching uh, the word. Uh, and he says to the disciples, uh, listen here. Uh, I feel like I'm in North Carolina now. I can still talk like I want to. Listen here. Uh, let us go over to the other side of the lake. Uh, somebody say, listen here. The text says they left the crowds, took Jesus as he was, insinuating they took the actual boat that Jesus was teaching in, and they take the journey to get ready to go over to the other side. Somebody say the other side. Don't you miss that. They took the actual boat that Jesus was in, and when they headed out in the direction to get to the other side of the lake, the text says a storm arose. When you're trying to get where God has called you to be, won't the storms come out of nowhere? When you're trying to get what God has told you, won't the storm rise up out of anywhere? The text says a storm came up. The NIV, the NIV says a furious squall came up. And the waves began to cause the water to come into the boat. Now you have to know the disciples are scared. In fact, they ain't scared. They scurred. So Somebody say scared because scared is different from scared. See, I can be scared, but there's a difference in scared. When you look at the movie while the lady is running and she's falling down, that's scared. Oh, but when you see death coming out of the corner, that's scared. Somebody say there's a difference between scared and scared. I wish I could talk to somebody. You have to know the disciples, they have fear and it allows fear to unarm their attention and upset their determination and when you welcome the elements of fear you cripple the effects of your faith it's why you got to be careful not to let fear dismantle your faith I need to say that again when you welcome the elements of fear you cripple the effects of your faith because faith and fear are two antithetical conceptualities it is a reason you can't let fear rob you of the power of your faith because no matter how bad the situation may appear no matter how difficult the circumstance may seem no matter how terrible the problem may be you got to know you serve a God that has given you authority to come through whatever tries to take your destiny you've got to open up your mouth and say something you got power in your tongue life and death resides in the power of your tongue. If you try to come out, you ought to have your mouth open up and say something. If you try to come into battle, you ought to open your mouth and say something. Because when you speak, it can come to pass. Somebody shout open your mouth. Fear is something that can snatch the very notability of your confidence in God. Somebody shout scared and scared. Oh uh, yeah, when you allow those things to uh, sit on your life it can rob you of what God has given you and it's the reason I bring it to our attention because if we're going to have renewed hope we have to stop allowing fear to keep us from walking in faith if God said you're going to get the promotion Get in the corner office and clap until you get it. If God says you're coming through, stop letting the devil lie to you and get in the corner and shout until that thing comes around. When God says he's going to make a way, don't just wait on the way, but give him the glory until you come through. I don't care how many people are laughing at you. I don't care how many people are talking about you. You serve a God who will do what he said he would do. Have I got a witness? Won't he do? It. If you know it, say yeah. yeah. Uh, let me share three things that fear would do, and then we have to get out of here. I'm through tonight because I don't want to worry you long. Number one, fear will cause you to forget the blessing of your proximity. Uh, somebody say that with me. I want to feel smart tonight. Uh, somebody say proximity. Oh, y'all. Ooh, isn't that wonderful? You got gold stars tonight. Come on, somebody say it one more time. Proximity. 
enmity. Uh, yeah, you, you see, you have to stretch your understanding of your proximity. And you have to be aware of who and what is around you. And you have to pay attention to what has been made available to you because there's something that will bless you in your proximity. Because God has positioned you in a place that he can place his hands upon you. Let's look at the text. The text says the disciples were on the boat. Uh, somebody shout the boat. And they were witnesses of the storm. They see the storm and they see it arise out of nowhere and it causes some commotion uh, to the boat. And because of fear, they are scared because of what they see before them. Because the water is walking the boat. Uh, why don't you just holler down your row and say, don't rock the boat, baby. Uh, there's something happening on the boat. Uh, but while they're on the boat uh, and the boat is rocking, uh, what they forgot uh, was whose boat they were in. Uh, oh, God. Uh, Lord, have mercy. Re remember the text says they were went with Jesus as they was, uh, which means they took his boat. And if they would remember whose boat they were on, they would have understood whose hands they were in. Because if you've ever looked and see who was still on board, you would look around your proximity and you would remember that Jesus is on this boat. If there anybody here that know that when Jesus shows up, something will happen. If you know it, shout, I know he will. And when Jesus is on the the boat. The boat says, I'm in good hands because not only is he on board, not only is it his boat, but Jesus is with us. And I hear somebody saying, Pastor, wait a minute, wait a minute. Pastor, I ain't on no boat. See, we here are in the church. We're in this nice sanctuary. And we're sitting in the seats. We're not on no water. We're not in no storm. We're in this building. And we face some storms. But we face some things. But we ain't on no boat. I think you missed the point. Number one, you can't let fear cause you to forget the blessing of your proximity. Look around you. You may not be in a boat. You may not be on the water. You may not be out to sea. But you are in the earth. And may I remind you that the Bible says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And it does not matter where you are. It does not matter your location. It does not matter the pain of your predicament. Jesus has you surrounded because not only is the earth the Lord, but the power of his might causes him to be omnipresent, which means wherever you are, God can show up and show out right where you are. In fact, the songwriter said that he's on the right, he's on the left, he's in front, he's in back, he's under me, he's over me, and he's keeping me alive. I heard somebody to say uh, he's got the whole world uh, in his hand uh, so whatever I face uh, fear will not rob me uh, whatever I come against uh, fear will not dissolve me uh, whatever I stand in front of uh, fear will not get the best of me uh, because I know uh, my proximity uh, that Jesus uh, is with me uh, so no matter where I am uh, no matter uh, what I'm in uh, no matter uh, what tried to bring me down. I still win because he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. Is there anybody in church tonight that's glad that you've got Jesus? Glad that he's with you. Glad that he's holding you. Glad that he's on your side. If you know it, clap your hands. Open your mouth. Damn him! Bible says they forget 
their proximity and the storm alarms their reality. The text says the disciples get bothered. They get irate. And because Mark is a gangster writer, he puts the terminology and the conversation of the disciples in gangster language. Uh, Matthew writes this same text, but he uses a softer approach. Luke writes this same story, but he makes a response, a plea for help. But Mark puts a little hood in it. He says, hey, hey, you don't care? We about to die up in this piece. Mark says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a, wait a minute. There's water coming from the right. There's water coming from the left. Don't you care? We are about to perish. Notice they say nothing about what will happen to Jesus. They say we about to be ghosts up in here. And you have to be careful about fear and the loss of hope because fear will cause you to confuse your assumption with God's answer. Uh, I ain't going to get no help there. Fear will cause you to assume the outcome before you come out. You will start determining that you're about to end before you begin. Yet the disciples allow fear to cause them to predetermine the course of their destination. They said, don't you care? We're going to perish. Don't you care? We're going to die. But you see, you can't let fear and the loss of hope talk you into believing something that God never said. God never said they would perish. And you have to be careful with what you assume because your assumption does not determine God's manifestation. Your assumption does not determine God's actions. Whatever is in front of you, it may appear bleak. It may look bad. It it may even sound bad, could even smell bad, may even be bad, but your faith ought to remind you that you serve a God who has the nerve to take the bad, mix it with the great, stirs it with the sad, and it comes out for your good. He makes everything turn around to work in your favor. For may I remind you that the Bible declares that all things work together for my good. That's why I cannot let fear cause me to get my assumption mixed up with God's answer because his ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. His response is not my response. But I will declare that God's will is what I want for my life. He has a way when I submit to his will. He already has the answer when I submit to his will. He already has the door when I submit to his will. He already has a way. Not my will, but thy will be done because I believe that God knows what's best for my life. I need to check out you in the room. Is there anybody here that trusts the will of God? Because some trust in horses. Others trust in chariots. But I will trust in the name of the Lord. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous come in and they are saved. Have I got a witness that you can shout that he will work it out? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? If you know it, say it. Say it. Wait. 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 Hold on. Hold on. The text says Jesus gets up. But I tell you, Jesus was asleep. But Jesus gets up. I'll come back to that later. Jesus gets up, rebukes the winds, commands the waves. I ain't got time to talk about that. He rebukes the winds, 
but he commands the ways because scientifically and somewhat psychometrically the winds of a storm arise because of the moisture of the water in the air. In fact, the moisture in the air gives breath to the wind. And so Jesus commands the water because he understands that the water is the root of the problem. And when he commanded the water, it took the breath out of the wind. And that blessed me because it helped me to realize that Jesus knows how to get to the root of my problem. Lord have mercy. He knows knows how to take the breath of whatever's trying to scare me. I can't stay there. There's silence on the water. Somebody say silence. There's silence in the air. And the disciples look at Jesus with fear and with awe. They said, wow. 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 Has Jesus ever done anything in your life that caused you to say, Wow, has he ever caused anything to happen in your life that you just said, oh, wow, I could not have done it by myself. It was by the grace and the mercy of God. Somebody just say, wow, if he's ever done anything for you, you ought to say, wow, can I get one witness to just shout, wow. He'll cause you to go, wow. They said I wouldn't make it. Wow. They said I wouldn't be here today. Wow. They said I'd never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way and I'm growing more and more each day. There were many that started out with me, but now they're going astray. But I'm still holding on to his hand. Is there anybody holding on? Wow. Somebody just say, wow. Jesus says, wait a minute. Let me, 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 let me ask, ask y'all a question. Do you still have no faith? Out of all you seen me do, Where's your faith? Whisper down the road so you won't embarrass nobody and so nobody won't know your business and just say, where's your faith? Yeah, yeah, don't call them out tonight. Don't, don't, don't blow this spot up tonight. Just say, where's your faith? Why, why don't you type that in the comments? Because somebody, where is your faith? How is it you still have no faith? Uh, now, Jesus knows that every man has a measure of faith. But he says this to them because they have allowed hopelessness and fear to override the existence of their faith. It's in there, but it's hidden under the fear and hopelessness that they've allowed to get on top of it. They have buried it, it seems. They've been blinded by the existence of it to the point that it's now undetectable in their life. And you have to be careful with fear. Because fear will hold your faith hostage. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You cannot afford to allow fear to hold your faith hostage when your faith has what is what made you free. You have to, you can't be scared to stand up in God. You don't have to be nervous about declaring the victory through the power of God. I don't care how many people tell you to don't count your chickens before they have. But you own, you know the one who owns the chicken and the egg. And you can shout before they hatch because you know that in the end you still win. I wish somebody would wave your hand and say, I'm still a winner. You don't have to clam up when you know you have the assurance of God because the sacrifice of the Son of God has set you free. And you can take dominion by the power of God. I come to tell you tonight, just in case you didn't know it, you can overcome overcoming anything that rises up against you because
because you are a child of God. Is there anybody here that got your child of God badge and you don't mind telling anybody, I am a child of God. Any children of God ought to holler in the room. You ought to give a holler on Facebook and shout, I am a child of God because you know the will of God and the Bible says that he whom the Son set free is free uh, somebody know Bible. Uh, you ought to make a declaration tonight uh, that fear will not bound you uh, or block you uh, or destroy you uh, and hopelessness will not dismantle you uh, and will not defeat you uh, because you have been set free. Uh, somebody shout I've been free. Uh, yeah. Uh, look at what the text says. Uh, the Lord showed me something here because I told you that Jesus was in the boat sleep. And the disciples awake him. Jesus is snoring. <sighs> Jesus is resting good. He's chilling out. And the boat is rocking and getting wet. And Jesus does not move. He does not even become alarmed. And I preached this text for years, but never understood how can Jesus sleep in the middle of a storm. I preached this text for years and missed a key part all the time, how Jesus rested in the storm. I thought this text was about the faith of the disciples, but this text is also about the example of Jesus. Jesus rests even in the midst of a storm. Uh, Y'all miss that. Uh, for the life of me, I always saw the question of faith, uh, but I never paid attention to what first happened uh, before Jesus' question. He says, why are you afraid? But Jesus is on snooze control. Uh, brother is out like a light uh, because he knows uh, that the Lord never sleeps nor slumbers. Uh, he shows them that when you are in a storm, uh, you ought to sleep like a baby because you serve a God who will take care of the storm. And I came to tell somebody tonight, stop walking the floors all night and being worried about your situation. You ought to go to sleep and sleep like a baby. Stop rocking up and being worried. Stop losing your hair. Stop pulling your hair out. Go to sleep and let God take care of the situation because if he can clothe the grass in the field if he can feed the birds in the meal if he can call the robin to sing then you ought to let God handle everything go to sleep get some rest take a chill pill relax relate release and let God take care of your situation. He will bring you out. He will solve your problem. He will pull you through. If you know it, shout, he will do it. Yeah. Look at the text. Jesus is puzzled. I'm done, y'all. He's puzzled. I'm supposed to be teaching this text tonight. He's puzzled. The reason that the disciples fill out, he says, what's wrong with y'all? Why are you flipping out? He's confused as to the reason that the disciples were coming along. He's not clear on why the disciples get irate. He says in so many words, I'm not sure why y'all are tripping, but y'all are asking the wrong question. You are saying, are we going to perish? But your question should be, are we there yet? I'm going to come back and get you because I didn't catch it the first time either. You are talking about, master, master, we perish. Jesus is saying, you should be saying, are we there yet? Let me see if I can say it like this way. Jesus asked them, why are you afraid? Didn't you hear me say, let us go 
to the other side of the lake. And if we're not at the other side yet, then why are you flipping out? Because you don't need to pay attention to the storm. You got to have faith in my word. Because when you believe what I said, it doesn't matter between here and there. We're going to get where my word says we'll be. Because the Bible declares that my word will not return void. I told you we were going to the other side of the lake. And regardless of what happens, regardless of the storm, regardless of the rain, because I said we're going to make it, Jesus said, I gave you my word. And the only thing you need to ask is are we there yet because you know that my word will not lie and I came to tell somebody in the room that if God said it you ought to believe it if God said it you ought to stand on it if God said it you ought to expect it if God said it you ought to wait on it for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I came to encourage somebody in the room that God will do what he said he would do. Somebody that believe it, wave your hand. You ought to ask, are we there yet? Because until you make it, you ought to shout on what God promised. Rest in his word that he'll do what he said he'd do. Stretch out in your faith and believe what God says. Stand on his word because his word says he's a man that cannot lie. His word says faithful is he that promise his word says he'll never leave you nor forsake you his word says he'll be with you always to the end of the earth since you're here in the earth it must mean Jesus is still with you anybody in the room know that Jesus is still with you you're gonna make it to the other side you gonna get there I don't know what your other side looks like but I came to tell somebody God can do it God can perform it don't stress out don't lose hope don't give up stretch your faith watch God work it out stretch him until you get there Praise him over here until you get there. Worship him over here until you get there. Walk in faith over here until you get there. Give him glory over here until you get there. Shout over here until you get there. Run over here until you get there holler over here until you get there shout joy over here until you get there cause now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think to the holy wise God our Savior, to Him be the glory, to Him be the honor, to Him be the praise. Somebody help me praise Him. Shout, yeah, shout, yeah, shout, yeah, shout, 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 shout. 
Shout! 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 Yeah! Yeah! you tonight. God is able to do what he said he would do. Have I got any believers? Have I got any believers? Have I got any believers? You know what? Until you get there, you ought to be able to say it. I got a feeling uh, that everything gonna be all right oh everything yes i got a feeling that everything gonna be all right be all right be all right come on somebody oh i got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right oh i got a feeling Everything's gonna be all right. Ah, I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Tonight, I want to remind you trust God here till you get there. He's going to do it just like he said he would. I'm glad tonight that I don't have to wait till the battle is over. I can shout right now. He's able to do it. And I want to tell somebody tonight, be not weary, in well-doing, for in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Hold on and don't let go. He's able to do it. I'm talking somebody off a ledge tonight. Hold on to Jesus. It won't always be like this. The trouble won't always succumb your life. The trial won't overtake you. God is working behind the scenes. Somebody at the end of the play called a curtain call. But just because the curtain is closed don't mean there's movement behind the scenes. God is working it out for your good. Be not dismayed, whatever betide. 
God will. Woo! I know he will. He'll take care of you. Won't he do it? I used to hear a pastor growing up, Pastor Rich of the St. Matthew Baptist Church, every Sunday, every now and then he'd lift up that him and say there's a bright side somewhere and I want to tell somebody don't you rest till you find it keep on shouting till you get it keep on telling the devil he's a lie till you come out of it keep on telling the naysayers it's what God said until they see God manifest himself through you. You're going to get there. Trust God in the process. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, tonight I thank you. I thank you because you're God all by yourself. I thank you tonight, God, because somebody almost gave up. They almost threw in the towel. But oh God, thank you for reminding us that you're still on board. You're still with us. Remind us of our proximity. That you're everywhere at the same time. God, remind us tonight not to lose hope, but have a renewed hope. God, that you're able to get to the root of our problem. God, I pray tonight that you will have your way in your people. Heal, deliver, and set free. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. And the people of God shouted amen. Somebody clap your hands in the room. Somebody clap your hands online and give him the glory. Hallelujah. As we leave this place tonight, but not from the presence of God, I want you to pray for this revival. We got one more night. I pray that I can do better tomorrow night. I'm going to try to behave myself on tomorrow. But it's Friday night. And Friday night, I may come become feeling all right. Because I know the Lord will take care of of every situation. As we lift our hands, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being in this space tonight. Thank you for sharing in this room tonight. From every church, from every, every corner of the earth, we thank God for those who are joining in tonight. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God shouted amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night in his name.